People are still going on and on about Hogwarts Legacy. But it does look like this whole don't buy the game stuff that people have been trying to push has quieted down a little bit, and that's with good reason. Because as soon as these people started to push the idea of boycotting this game, it blew up in their face, and the game sold like crazy. It became the highest ordered game on Steam, PlayStation 5, and number two on Xbox. It blew up in their face. So a lot of the people that have been begging you to boycott this game have silenced themselves a little bit because, well, they learned that most people don't like them. <laughs> They've learned that people don't care for their crying and their complaining. And because of that, they've stopped talking about the game, which was the smartest thing they could have ever done in the first place. I think the game would still sell well, even without all this, but this did definitely help push the game up early. It did. It helped sell the game a little bit because it's become a part of a, a culture war now. So this is the only time I've seen this get spoken of in a while. So January 30th, that's today. Hogwarts Legacy Boycott Controversy Explained. And they just kind of go over everything. But one interesting thing in this article is this. How have people responded to the backlash? And they actually have comments from IGN who spoke with the developers of Hogwarts Legacy. And, of course, they ask him. It's IGN. They ask him about J.K. Rowling. What do you think about J.K. Rowling? This game, when it comes out, like every review for it is going to have some kind of disclaimer on J.K. Rowling if they even review it. And if they give it a good review, half of the, reviews, the review is going to be dedicated to uh, denouncing her. Wait and see. Wait and see. But anyway, they, of course, had a chance to interview the Hogwarts legacy people, and they didn't really ask them too much about the game. They decided to spend most of the time asking about J.K. Rowling. I think for us, there are challenges in every game that we've worked on. This game has been no different. When we bumped into these challenges, we went back and refocused on the stuff that we really care about. We know our fans fell in love with the Wizarding World, and we believe they fell in love with it for the right reasons, he said. We know that it's a diverse audience. For us, it's making sure that the audience, who always dreamed of having this game, had the opportunity to feel welcomed back, that they have a home here, and that it's a good place to tell their story. Now, that answer wasn't good enough. That answer wasn't good enough. So they asked them again about it because, well, you have to because they want answers. They want a straight-up denouncing of J.K. Rowling. Put her on a cross, the journalists say. But here it is right here. I asked him a second question. If he himself ever had any thoughts about working on this IP after Rowling's biases made headlines... And after I paused, because he had to think, how am I going to make sure that this stupid pile of crap journalist doesn't try and destroy my life? He says, uh, in a, a reiteration of his previous thing, that the team made Hogwarts Legacy for everyone. Because they want to destroy this guy who talked to him. Uh, his name's Tu. It's his last name, I'm sure. I think he's the head developer. Alan Tu, the game's director. Yeah, address these. These comments. So they, they had to ask this guy two questions. Well, wait, you didn't mention J.K. Rowling in the first paragraph that you gave us. Can you can you reiterate that for me? Uh, I want to destroy your life if you don't denounce J.K. Rowling. So could you please give me a second answer to that question? These people just want to destroy everybody. That's why they hate this game so much, because it's so successful, and they've tried so hard, so hard to destroy it. And it's just blown up in their face. So uh, you, you've got them now trying to go after the developers because that's what this is. Make no mistake. This guy worded his response to that question very, very well. If he had praised her in any way or mentioned her 
they would be calling for his life. But he he successfully he successfully deflected them. Now you see shit like this running all over. Wait a minute. Will she make any money? Will she make any money from Hogwarts Legacy? Well, the short answer is yes. Every unit sold. <laughs> She's making something from it. I don't know what it is, but she damn well, you know she damn well makes a percentage probably off of every unit sold. So here's the answer right here that you're looking for. Although Rowling seemingly hasn't created new content for the game, the entire premise of the world Hogwarts Legacy is based on Rowling's intellectual property, and by association, she is sure to receive royalties based on that. Rowling consistently makes passive income on all Harry Potter products. Multiple sources have cited that Rowling earns anywhere between 50 to 100 million each year from royalties. Forbes estimated she earned 95 million in 2017 alone. It's not been announced how much money or what percentage of profits Rowling could make from Hogwarts Legacy. The video game industry is often overlooked as a money maker. But it's predicted that revenue in the video game segment is projected to reach $221 billion in 2023. They believe the industry will continue to grow exponentially. As is the case with every ticket bought to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter theme parks, every copy of Hogwarts Legacy sold is likely to send a percentage of the money made to rolling. She, if she doesn't receive royalties from each sale, that would be because the rights to the royalties were paid up front. <laughs> and then they make fun of boycotts too, which are fun. Opponents of hers are calling for a boycott to prevent Rowling from profiting, but would it work? According to my research, there have been a number of known video game boycotts and none of them apparently have substantially hurt the developer's bottom line. A debate is raging online whether people should be excited or should avoid the game altogether. I think that's just, I think all of this is hilarious. I really do. And I find it funny that people are crying in their pillows at night over this damn game. You know, if you don't like her, just don't buy her stuff. But don't tell other people what to do. It's always going to blow up in your face. And uh, this one's this one's uh, just a legendary meltdown that I'm really loving. I can't wait for this game to come out. It's out in like 10 days. So cue the fireworks. We're going to have a good time with this. I'll be streaming it day one, probably on Rumble, maybe on YouTube. I might stream this game on the main channel <laughs> just because it's it's going to be such a special occasion. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments below. Also, if you would, please like, subscribe, and share the video. Make sure you're still subscribed to that notification bell. Check out my Rumble and Locals, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Make sure to check out my Locals. There's a link in the description. It's a fun community that I'm trying to build over here. If you don't want to support me on YouTube, you can come over here. None of that money goes to YouTube. You also can just come over here for free, but if you are a supporter over here i do plan on doing an extra live stream once a month and throwing links to the supporters so you can actually come on and have a supporter live stream with me also it's a good place to catch all of my content you don't have to worry about notifications like youtube they'll definitely work over here so come check out my locals